Hey guys, we're back. Fred here, AF Path and Engineering, and we're finishing up this column question, so let's get started. So the second part of the question asks us to find the Euler's compressive buckling load if the angles are riveted together. So when they're riveted, it means they're bolted very tightly together and that they, they, they can't spin or move, okay? So they're, they're essentially, they become a unit, okay? So now what we're working with is instead of two independent L-shaped columns, Okay, what we have is we have a single column. We have a single piece here, okay, which means that our moment of inertia is going to change. Now, it's not gonna change in, every, in each axis, necessarily. So that's something that we need to take a look at and, and, and analyze, okay? And that's where the kind of the tricky part comes in, okay? So let's take a look at that. So whenever we see that there are two, there are multiple sections connected, let's take a look at the moment of inertia. So I've gone and I've drawn, not a great drawing down here, just for you to visualize this, okay? is we had two moment of inertias here, right? Before, okay? Now, what those are called is that we have the local moment of inertia, okay? So we have, for each angle, okay, we have a moment of inertia here, which is Y, and we have a moment of inertia here, which is Y, okay? But when, we, when they're connected through rivets here, okay, right, the moment of inertia moves, okay? And it moves to the center here, all right? And that's called the global moment of inertia, okay? And that is what we need to find, okay? Because if you remember from the question before, we need to find the minimum moment of inertia to begin the question, okay? So let's begin. So as we can see here, okay, the moment of inertia in the x-axis, all right, doesn't change if we, if we rivet them together, okay? It's gonna, it's gonna get bigger, but it's the, both angles are still passing through the moment of inertia of the x-axis, okay? So there's no parallel axis theorem. So let's find ix, okay? And we're gonna call it ix prime, all right? And if, if you just take a look up here, okay? And when you look at the table or in the exam, you're gonna get a little diagram like this, okay? And it's gonna show you what your x-axis is, what your y-axis is, and usually your xc or yc, your y-bar, your, your distance from the edge of the, the shape to, to the axis, okay? And we're gonna use that here, okay? When, when looking at our, our general shape that we're given, okay? So with that in mind, let's try and find Ix prime. So the global X moment of inertia of our entire cross section when these two are fastened together. So that is going to be, because they both pass through the moment of inertia still, okay? We haven't displaced it vertically. We only displaced the, it horizontally in the y-axis, okay? So there's gonna be no parallel axis theorem here. So all we need to do is just take our ix that we were given, and we're just gonna to have to multiply that by two, and that's gonna give us our new moment of inertia in the x-axis, okay? So we have 3.93 times 10 to the six millimeters to the fourth, and then we're just gonna multiply that by two, and that should give us, okay? 7,860,000 millimeters to the fourth. Now let's find our Y prime, our IY prime, and that we're gonna compare these two, okay? And the smaller one is gonna be the one that we're going to use to determine the critical load. We explained that in the last video. So let's do it. Now, as you can see from here, right, we have shifted the moment of inertia in the Y axis here over to the center, okay? Because now it's a symmetrical shape, so the moment of inertia is in the middle but we're only given the data for over here, okay? And we know that this distance, okay, is given as xc. So all we need to do is use our parallel axis theorem, right, which is going to be iy plus a dx squared, okay? And we're going to use this and find our new moment of inertia. So let's begin. So we are given, and this is obviously times two, right, because we have two of them, we're not gonna do them separately, make our lives easier. And what was our IY? Well, it was 1.07 times 10 to the six millimeters the fourth, and then we're just gonna shift it over, okay, with our ADY term. A is 2,420, and our DX, right, is our XC, all right? So our XC is 19.1, we're gonna square that, okay? Simple as that. And what is our IY prime? Well, if we put that into our calculator, sorry, I'm just gonna write this off of my calculator here. There we have it, okay? That is our 
new global moment of inertia on the y-axis. So let's go ahead and we'll compare the values and right off the bat we can see that this one is smaller, okay? So this is our I minimum. And this is the one that we're going to use to find the Euler's buckling load, the compressive buckling load. And it's exactly the same as the last question, okay? So like I said before, this is really the tricky part of this section is finding the moment of inertia, okay? And your professor may give you three, four, five, six different channels. They may flip them depending on what uh, is given in the book, okay? So those are some of the tricks. And the, the way you're gonna get better at that is just by solving different problems. This is just to give you an idea of how uh, the, the, the general concepts work, okay? The rest is gonna be up to you. So let's just go back to our formulas that we were given, okay? earlier, which is, we have pi squared times E times I minimum over L prime squared, right? Same thing as before. Let's sub in. We have, sorry, we have pi squared, okay, times our E value, which is 200 times 10 to the 9, right? Because we're working with meters squared, times our I minimum, okay? And in this case, our I minimum is our I Y prime, right? So our I Y prime is, and we're going to go ahead and convert that to meters squared, 680.4 times 10, and that's going to be to the negative 12, okay, over our L, which is, as given before in the question, is 4 meters, and it's pin pin, so L prime is 4 meters, and that's going to be 4 squared. And we're going to arrive at a Euler Buckling load of okay, 481,844.006 newtons, which is our critical buckling load. So the maximum load that we can apply on this riveted two angle column before it buckles or fails due to buckle, buckling. And that's it. That's, it's as simple as that. Don't make silly mistakes because this kind of question is a gimme on the exam. I hope this helped you guys out and feel free to give us a like and a subscribe if you enjoy our videos. And thanks for watching.